out of the way for the gold. Move out of the way for the gold. Oh, big knee! The greatest of all time. Here we go, the epic trilogy fight. For the first time ever, Demetrius Johnson defends the one flyweight world championship in the USA. Greatest of all time, I'm an animal. No bark or bite, that's why they call me go. One Fight Night 10, Johnson versus Marias 3 on Prime Video. I, I do think it's a very tough fight for Henry Cejudo. At his age, if you look at the odds, odds are not on his side at his age and going for a title shot. Uh, I'll give you my picks right now. I'll take, let me see it, Jin. Uh, I'm taking the dogs here. Now, listen, I'm taking the dogs. If I wanted to be on the side of caution, make sure I'm right, so you guys you know, take my, my picks serious, I can do that. That's what every other show you watch is going to do. That's not what I do. And now, Brandon Thick Boy Shog. What is up, fam? Oh, it is May 1st. May 1st. Cinco de Mayo is coming up. Happens to be my girl's birthday, too. Yay. Cinco de Mayo and B-Day. A lot of Mexican culture going on at the crib right now. Kids balls deep in soccer. They keep losing. <laughs> Complete waste of my time. Anyway, what's going on? Big fight week, fam. Big fight week. You know it's a big fight week when even Firing the Kid has some fight news on it. We uh, It will be up uh, pretty soon. It will be, uh, we had Chatri on mm -hmm. and Mikey Musha, Musha, Musha Meshi. Meshi, who is the jiu-jitsu phenom. The, the the young man who doesn't look like he could beat you up, but he definitely can. We had him on Fire and the Kid. One of my favorite shows we've done, Chen. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Uh, Chatri is just an absolute gem of of a human being. and has such a great backstory. So that will be on Fire and the Kid with Brian Callen. And you have uh, Chatri and Mikey on there. And uh, you got one championship this Friday in my hometown, Denver, Colorado. It's actually in Broomfield to be uh, – Specific. To be specific there. It's at the First Bank Center, um, which I fought in many of times when I was a young pup coming up. So it's going to be great to come back and check out one championship. I've heard nothing but great things as far as the production goes. And uh, listen, the UFC card, UFC 288, is is good. It's freaking good, man. And I would pay just to see uh, Muhammad, Gilbert Burns, Aljo, Henry Cejudo, uh, Steamrolla, and Drew Dober. Take my money. The rest of the cards, it's okay. It's 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 solid. I think we're a little spoiled because the the pay per views have been so stacked. This is a quality card, so I see some you know some complaining going on online there. But I think you guys are off on this. Things being a great card, especially when you get a Steamroller uh, versus Drew Dober for free as the main event on the prelims on ESPN. So overall, it's a good card. Um, but I would. I don't think this is out of pocket here. I would argue that one championships card in their first time breaking ground in the United States in uh, Denver, Colorado is actual from top to bottom is a better card, better card overall. Uh, your headliner, um, this is what's getting most of the attention is Demetrius Johnson, the pound for pound goat for a lot of people uh, in his rubber match, right? Rubber match yep. fight against uh, Adriano Marias. And so they're one and one. And uh, Chatri would argue that they're the two best flyweights on the planet, bar none. It's a fair argument. Um, you know, so this is a great fight uh, for numerous of reasons. It's also, when you look at their fights, it's not like the first fight somebody dominated, the second fight somebody dominated, you know, and then they're just doing a trilogy for the heck of it. No, no, no. This is a, a, a great fight. It's, it's a tough fight for both gentlemen. You know, both have... Uh, you know, their advantages and disadvantages, and it is a straight scrap. So I'm excited for that one, obviously. And also, just to add more hype to it, Demetrius Johnson said this might be his last one. So hopefully it's not. I, I don't know if it will be. I don't know if I'm feeling that vibe from him, but we'll see. Um, we'll probably talk to him this week. But for DJ, for it to be his last fight is insane. So you've seen one of the greats maybe walk away, um, and it just happens to be the first time one championship breaks ground in the United States. You have Rod Tang. If you don't know Rod Tang, he's the fly, flyweight uh, Muay Thai guy. Probably the best in the world. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He will knock your freaking socks off. This guy's so talented, so fun to watch. Him and uh, DJ actually fought 
in a kind of a super fight thing where it was a mix uh, rules, a mix. It was a collab mm-hmm. where it was Muay Thai and MMA. So first round was Muay Thai. Obviously, DJ got dealt with in Muay Thai. Second round was MMA. Then DJ got his neck and choked him literally to sleep. I don't think Rod Tang know how to tap. <laughs> he was just like, what's happening here? And then just went to sleep. So that was fun. Uh, and then you also have uh, Mikey Mushomeshi fighting Osama. Um, and Mikey is the most talented grappler on the planet. He's also the instructor for a guy named Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Ever heard of him? He talks about all that in Fire and the Kid. Um, but yeah, he's the world champion. He only competes really now in one championship. He Because even on Fire and the Kid, I go, how's the contract work? Because there's so many jiu-jitsu competitions. You have the worlds and all that stuff happening. Can you go outside? He's like, there's no need to. I can c- compete every month. And I'm making, you know, real good money. So mm. it's changing the jiu-jitsu game, man. But Mikey's a great kid. Mikey's a pizza connoisseur. He's a pizza expert. So the team here was like, oh, Mikey eats one state and he eats pizza. Let's go get him pizza. <laughs> yeah. So up the street from here, you have an Irwan, which is, if, if I don't is the Irwan outside of uh, LA? Are there Irwans? I don't know. Either. I've never seen them. For those of you that don't know, everyone knows what Whole Foods is. It's like a Whole Foods on steroids. It's a nightmare. Their food's delicious. Their hot bar second to none. The problem is, if you just get like four chicken tenders, you can't get out of there without spending $40. Like if you just get chicken tenders, it's $40. Everything's $40 minimum. It's a nightmare. But uh, so we, you know, we thought, yeah, Mike, you get the world champion. He's one state. Let's go get him pizza from that fancy place. So we ordered two large, one pepperoni, one cheese pizza. We're pretty hyped about it. Some of my favorite pizza. Now, is it Jelena takeaway? No. Is it Juista? No. Is it Prince Street? No. Is it Bodegas? No. But it's good for Calabasas. It was good. We enjoyed we it. We enjoyed it. Yeah. We doing the show. I'm like, Mikey, there's your pizza, my man. We open up. He goes, oh, oh. He's looking at it. I'll admit, wasn't piping hot. Looked a little stale. And he went, that's not high level. And I went, what? He goes, that's not high level. Le- le- you could tell he was like stressed. He's like, that's not high level pizza. I go, oh, yeah. I mean, it's good for around here. He goes, yeah. I go, hold on, dude you don't have to eat this. He goes, oh, thank God. I went, oh, you thought we were forced you to eat this? No, man. You choke everybody <laughs> unconscious here if you wanted to. You don't, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, my man. You don't have to do anything. But he, uh, yeah, that's the pizza. I had a slice of pepperoni myself. It was delicious. Uh, it, it's good it pizza. The crust is good. But Mikey was not feeling it, man. Brian John said, oh, shit, fucking Irwan pizza. <laughs> but it's, it was delicious. I mean, he said, uh, that's Mikey there. So much fun. Thank you for having us. See you next week. I'll find us good pizza in Colorado to eat. <laughs> You'll find us pizza in Colorado? I'll find us pizza in Colorado. That's my hometown. Uh, yeah. You know what? I did promise him I'd wear a shirt to the fight so I could go order a shirt ASAP. Mr. Mechie shirt? Eesh. Unless they sell it at the venue. I don't know how that works. Such a good dude, though. Yeah, he's such a sweetheart. And he's such a sweetheart. Yeah. Such a badass, too, man. Yep. Really good. Uh, and Chaudhry. I can rant and rave about Chachi Char- cool. for days, for days, dude. He's he's a he's an outlier amongst all the you know the the faces of the people that own all these fight organizations or just pro sports in general. You know the commissioners of all these leagues, the owners of the UFC, owner of uh, PFL, Bellator, all these owners. Ain't no one stacks up with Chachi. When you look at degree from Harvard, what he came from, His none of them. Insane, yeah. An actual mixed martial artist, mm-hmm. like trains every day, has a background in mixed martial arts, isn't doing this to be famous, isn't doing this to make money, could have sold a long time ago, doesn't do that stuff. He's doing it for the game. His and passion, that's, yeah, that's what he said. Pa- straight passion. Yeah. He, he's my favorite, my absolute favorite. And this is what frustrates me. You know, we shot with Chatri and Mikey on Friday. <sighs> oh, and at the time, we we're talking about Francis Ngano. And with Francis, my take on Francis right now, I'm sure it's going to be current events, so I'll jump into it right now. My, and then we'll get into UFC 288. My, mm-hmm. my take on Francis is this the longer that it goes on, that, he's not, that he doesn't have a fight coming up, the worse it is for him as far as leverage. People forget this game evolves so fast. There's other headliners, there's other big names out there, the boxing game. He he's the you know he's fun, but he's you know he's the side piece. He's not wifey. He's the side piece in all of this. So the more this goes on, and we don't hear his name in the big fights in boxing, we haven't heard for a while now. Deontay Wilder teased it, but then now he's ranked number one. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Probably fighting a big boxing name, 
But the longest it goes on for Francis, the worst it is if you're a Francis fan. It's not good. So when Chatri, when he came in, me, we're, me and him were talking about it. He goes, yeah, I'm supposed to meet with uh, Francis in L.A. He's in L.A. We've been trying to meet for a while now. Finally, we're making it happen. You know, we have, we have an offer. And he's like, money's not the issue. We can pay him more than anybody. UFC says they offer him the highest contract ever, of, uh, heavyweights ever in the UFC. We'll destroy that. We're offering more money than he can imagine. So money's not the issue. It's these other things outside of that that makes it um, tough for us. You know, some of his demands, and it's not my it's not my place to air Chatri's details out with the negotiation. It's not what I do. But some of the demands that he told me that Francis made blew my mind. I was like, oh, that's the problem. Mm. There's the there's the problem. Now I don't know if I don't think he, Markel's not his age anymore. I don't know who he's listened to, um, but it's not. I'll put it this way: it's not good. Nobody is going to sign him for that. Nobody, nobody. It's not happening. So at some point, he needs to get off his high horse and go. I'm still a fighter. I'm still a fighter. I need to do what's best for me. And now I know he wants to do what's best for the fighters and equal rights and all that shit. With when it comes to fighter pay, all good, dude. But what's going to happen? is your voice is so much more powerful. If you want to make a change, become world champion one championship. Beat Deontay Wilder, and then keep harping on this. But right now, there's not a ton of leverage there. And some of the stuff that he's asking for, I've never even heard of fighters asking for, ever, in my entire life. I've heard of some crazy shit from comics with their writers when it comes to green rooms, for fighters, NFL players. I've heard of crazy shit. You hear this, you're like, oh, no, he's going no, to take that. And Chatri came out today and said, met with him. Uh, after careful reflection, we decided not to submit our final offer. Francis is a good guy, a good champion. I wish him continued success and happiness. Uh, at the end of the day, I didn't feel Francis and I were fully aligned on non-financial yeah. matters. That's the big one. It's nothing personal. It's just a lack of alignment. That should be alarming if you're in the Francis and Gano camp. So already, outside of pay, so we know it's not pay, outside of pay, Francis can't go anywhere and make more money than he was going to make in one championship. So that's off the table. Let's take a little break from chat and all things fighting because UFC 288 is here this Saturday. And we have one heck of a main event. Al Jermaine Sterling versus Henry Cejudo. The belt is on the line. Who will secure the Bantamweight title? Place your bets on DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. New customers can make a $5 bet and score $150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, everyone can take an MMA action to the next level with the DraftKings same game parlays. Combine multiple bets for a shot at even bigger payout. Listen, I like the dogs on this, especially if you're a betting man, which I am. I like Steamroller as the dog. I like Crone Gracie as a dog. I like uh, Muhammad as the dog and Aljo, Aljo, Jermaine Sterling as the dog as well. Bet a parlay on those dogs, you're making bank, bro. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use code SHOBSHOW. Bet $5 on any UFC 288 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. This is That's this Saturday on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code SHOBSHOW, S-C-H-A-U-B, SHOW. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit Gambling Help. Line MA.org in New York, call 8778 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. In Kansas, call 1 800 522 4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 older in most eligible states, plus, uh, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. DraftKings, promo code SHOP Show, UFC 288. Let's go. UFC now could be a negotiate, negotiation tactic from Dana White goes, we'll never sign him back. So let's assume Dana's true to his word. UFC's off the table. So you have one championship in the UFC, the two biggest by far in all of the world. Nobody bigger. What's left? Bellator, probably can't afford him. Uh, we, we, PFL, okay. Bare knuckle, can't afford him. They even said, uh, we can't meet the demand. So you've already pissed off the UFC, which is the biggest player in the game in North America. You've already scorched the earth as far as negotiations go with one championship. Now what? Now you have to pray to God that the boxing route works out. And boy, if you think MMA is a tough business, there is not a more corrupt business in this fucking professional sports world than boxing. 
and that's what you're putting all your basket eggs in your basket it, it's insane it, it's, it's such a shame i don't know who's helping him negotiate i don't know if he has an agent i don't know if this is a lamar jackson thing where you don't want to pay an agent a percentage that is not the way to do it it's not the way to do it because one championship and this is where it made so much sense one championship goes we believe in mixed martial arts we believe in martial arts in general so francis will have an opportunity to a fight for a world championship in mixed martial arts and b we're open to him fighting boxing when it, if he, he boxed first that was his caveat with ufc well i want to box first and then fight in ufc and ufc went absolutely not you know fight john then we'll figure out the boxing francis said nope i want to box first when championship said cool we'll let you do that we'll be part of that We'll be part of the marking of that. We'll do all that for you. Now, what's he going to do? It's not good, man. It's yeah. not good. And I don't know who needs to get in France here. Nobody needs you. Big martial arts across the board, boxing across the board will be just fine. Nobody's bigger than the game. Nobody. Nobody. The closest person we've ever had that was bigger than the game is Conor McGregor. He has some a little more leverage than Francis, right? So for France, it's like, I don't know who you're listening to, man, but this is not going well. This has been a fucking disaster. The what I thought this was the perfect situation. It's so frustrating, man. So frustrating. And that one championship fight, that heavyweight fight, he's that Russian, not a walk in the park, but they, you're allowed to do that and box. Where are you going to go? You start your own league? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what yeah. the fuck are you going to do, man? It's so frustrating. That would be the dude, Antali. Antali's a problem. He's a fucking problem. He's undersized at 223. Should probably be a light heavyweight in most areas, but I think the perfect weight for a heavyweight is about 235, 240. You look at Kane in his prime. You look at Stipe in his prime. JDS in his prime. So I remember looking at uh, the articles we brought up before, but so Bellator said they were 50-50. That's how hard the negotiations were. And then uh, PFL said, like, we're – heading in a positive direction but we're not sure what's going so he had he must have the, some crazy demands i mean it seems like he has some crazy demands i know for a fact he does. <laughs> yeah yeah no i know for e that's every single from the big promotion that's every the promotion and they would love to have them then yeah. think about it they're like oh we're good think about one chatri think about chatri he's offering them offers him he was willing to meet with him in dubai he was willing to fly to fucking morocco he's fly to africa just to figure this deal out finally they meet in la and he goes the money you're asking for here you go the boxing, here you go. The other demands. The other demands yeah. is what they're so outrageous that Chachi goes, We're good. We're just going to carry on. We're good. It's it. God, you fucked up. It, that would have been a perfect relationship. I'm so frustrated because I'm a Francis fan. And I remember Markel, like, he's a friend of the show, obviously, friend of Love yours. Love Markel. He was, he had his back with the whole UFC stuff. He Fire actually him. had a fight with, or online fight with Dana White. But then suddenly he's gone from the picture now too. Like, think about saying, what think about what Markel did just for his career. Like, yeah. think about shit Markel got. Think about that text that got leaked about the racism that he was dealing with oh, too yeah. with UFC brass <coughs> Dana. Think about all that stuff, right? And Markel just got trashed. His name got dragged through the mud, but he knew he was doing the right thing. And then they're finally at the end of the tunnel. Francis goes, "Thanks for giving me through the tunnel. See ya." Yeah, Being frustrated yeah. for Markel. Because this, your, your payoff was going to be this. If you had the right guy on his team, they'd go, whoa, Francis, Francis, we know you want to change the game, all that stuff. Let's handle our job first and then do that and then worry about that stuff. You have a much bigger platform, much more leverage once you're world champion over here. Once you have whatever it is, $50 million in the bank from fighting Deontay Wilder, Fury, then let's talk about this. But right now, you got a lot of work to do, dude. We got a lot of work. You're, you're focused on the wrong shit, man. And you're not young. He's not that young, you know? It's so frustrating. I can't stand this. Now, I was also on the side, too, uh, 36, yeah. you know? With, you know, coming off a knee injury. So, you know, th there's that, and there's also what's frustrating. And, again, I'm a guy when uh, – NFL, if you're an NFL fan, the Lamar Jackson stuff is very, I mean, everyone's covered it. So he decided not to hire an agent and have his mom represent him to save the 3 to 5% on the contract. Again, it sounds good that you're saving 3 to 5%, and he got paid the highest, I think, of any uh, court. He's now the highest paid quarterback with the guaranteed money. It's a lot of money. 
but would you rather have 500 million and give someone 5% or have 300 million and you keep it all, you know? So when there's agents exist for a reason, you know, now a lot of them are dinosaurs and, you know, sometimes you don't need them or man, you may not need when it comes to an agent, the reason you need them is they can start these bidding wars for your career. So for Lamar Jackson, his mom doesn't know the GMs at all the teams and create different bids and see test the waters to see where you're at. Now he got the money, right? They were the last second, got the money, so it worked out for him technically. I would be willing to argue that he probably would have got paid even more if he had a legit agent on his side. With Francis, okay, dude, don't use an agent. Negotiate yourself with a guy like Chaudhry, who's Harvard educated. Argue with a guy like Dana White, who's been in there with the big boys. He's a shark, and his lawyers, the best of the best. Try to try to argue with those guys. That's that they might as well jump in the octagon and fight. They shouldn't be fighting. He shouldn't be negotiating. You, and he's learned the the worst way, man. It's, it's it could cause him his career. He's learning the worst way. It's a it's a shame, man. I'm so frustrated. So frustrated. There are outliers, though, right? Like, so Sean O'Malley, I guess, remember he says he does his own negotiating. So he's maybe the kind of personality that can do that. And I, I again, he doesn't have a degree in business. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm all the power to him because apparently his contract's a lot of money. But when he becomes champion, if he does, God willing, he becomes champion. Mm -hmm. And you get in those pay per view points. What experience does he have to negotiate those pay per view points? That's where you get fuck you money. So an agent's can go, well, I represent Anderson Silva, Brock Lesnar, Conor McGregor. We know what those guys got, so we can negotiate that. If you have no clue, you think you're getting a good deal. I'm sure Sugar Sean th thought or thinks he got the good deal. I'd be willing to imagine if you had an agent, even though you're giving 5% or 10% of this, he probably would have got you a better deal. So we think it's going well. But I would be, in my experience, in all these years, I would be willing to bet the agent probably could have gotten more money. You know, because they know the ins and outs. They're dealing with this all the time. You don't want to be the guy deal for Francis. You don't want to be, you want to be training. You want to be thinking about beating Deontay Wilder, f f fucking Tyson Fury. It's hard enough, but n okay. You're a businessman now. Yeah, now you want to be a businessman. Now's not the time. Yeah. Now you want to deal with this and go through all this trials and tribulation, learn the hard way. You're, you're getting an education now, you know, it's not good. Regardless, one championship, that whole uh, rant about uh, one championship is they have a great card this weekend, <laughs> and I'll be there. <laughs> I will be there cage side uh, with my uh, Mikey shirt on, uh, just screaming like a real a real uh, cage groupie, just a real rat groupie. I think they call them cage rats. Yeah, I'll be a little cage, cage rat. Rats. I'm going to have my tits out, my balls to the side. Uh, so you got Demetrius Johnson, Marias, uh rubber match, Rod Tang, the best striker in the world. Mikey Mushameshi, the pizza connoisseur, pizza expert, the most technical jiu-jitsu player on the planet. You have Stamp Fairtax. You have Roberto Solditch, who is the freaking RoboCop creation. And after you're done listening to this, make sure you listen to Fire Kid because Chachi tells a story about signing him in Croatia. And they go to Krokop's house mm -hmm. and eat with him and train with him, and it's fantastic. <laughs> He talks about how big of a star he is. You have Sage Northcutt coming back after all these years. Was it five years? I think it's like three or four. Three or four. Um, and then one of, also one of my favorite fighters uh, in the world, you have uh, RDR, um, just the, the Savage. The Savage, and that's a, that's grappling. All right. Against the, one of the Rotola brothers, Ty. Yes. Yeah, they're badass. Super badass. So you have that going on. You got UFC 288. Let's jump in the UFC 288. So UFC 288, I do think it's worth your money. I think we're spoiled because, you know, the, the pay-per-views have been so great. The fight nights have been rough. This past weekend's, how dare you, UFC? And that's no shade on any of the, the fighters on the card. It's just, you know, they're, 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 they're getting one over on us. They, they have to meet those ESPN demands, and they're doing the Apex Center, which sucks for the fighters. There's no fans. The experience sucks as viewers, too. The whole thing's bullshit. But, uh... You know, this, this card's quality. You know, again, I would pay just for Aljo, Henry Sudo, Muhammad, Gilbert Burns, Crone Gracie, Charles uh, Jordan, Bryce Mitchell, um, Drew Dober, Matt uh, Steamroller. I'd pay just to see them. Take my money. All right, I'm in. 
Matt's on the card against Drew Dober. Take my money. I don't even need to know the rest of the card. It could be an all female card and just have them as the co main event. I'm in. Take my money. You know? So um, I think people are a little too harsh on this card because we're spoiled. But uh, it's a good card. Uh, with Drew Dober, Matt, uh, Steamroller, Ferrola. You know, this is one of those fights where Drew Dober's number 14. Uh, he's won three in a row. He does train with my old team at high altitude martial arts. So I have a sweet spot for Drew Dobert. He also came up the same uh, kind of local circuit I did in Ring of Fire. So that, that I love Drew Dober. He's one of my favorite fighters. I always root for Drew Dober, except when he fights Matt. Matt's my guy. I like Matt. We have Matt on the show uh, today. And Matt is just, uh, you can't help but love the guy. He's a Ray Longo, Matt Sierra. Uh, protege he trains with aljo he's just a quality fucking human being mm -hmm. and he's an exciting fighter man he just has to fight smart G against drew dober you can't do the bobby green shit and hands down and play that phone booth you know technique and you're gonna get knocked out drew dober is a fucking bazooka so um i'm, I'm taking matt on this if he fights smart i'm taking my boy matt and then i told him if he wins we get him on a fight campaign and mm -hmm. food truck if you lose we'll see right <laughs> <laughs> just get <laughs> win you matt yeah. Um, and then Crone Gracie, never mad when he fights. This is this fight could be in 1993. You have a straight jiu-jitsu guy versus straight striker. It's uh, and now Charles is coming off two losses, so you know I'm sure his morale and uh, I'd like to see his mindset come in this fight. He's coming off two losses, you know. Um, he better watch his p's and q's. You know, Crone's one of the best I've ever seen as far as grappling goes. I grappled with him mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, he's, he's one of my favorite human beings on earth. He's a straight savage. His family is responsible for mixed martial arts in North America and across the world. Uh, his last fight was in 2019 against wow. Cub Swanson. That was too much too soon. That was a bad, bad matchup for him. He took some time off. I'm not mad at him for that. It was still fight of the night. He still gave Cub Swanson all he could handle. I didn't, it was too much too soon, man. A Cub Swanson? What are we yeah. doing to he, he, he fought one time in the UFC and they're like, here's Cub Swanson. Like, Jesus Christ. They do that. We was, remember Korean Superboy was killing it and they gave him Cubs Watson? Dude, yeah, dude. It's fucked it, up. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, help yeah. him out here. Crone's one of my favorites, man. He's so awesome. yeah, Crone kicking the card off, taking Crone via submission. Nothing new there. I'm taking Matt via TKO. Crone uh, submission. This next fight, Bryce Flat, it, Flat Earther Mitchell uh, <laughs> versus uh, Mo Movsar. Yes, Movsar El, El Evloev. He's a beast, but he's a decision beast, right? So... When it comes to they're kind of, it's a rough matchup for Bryce Mitchell. You can tell the UFC is not flat earthers. Um, <laughs> now he wasn't originally supposed to fight him, so it's not like they're throwing him to the wolves. But as far as stylistically, it's a rough matchup for Bryce. I'm rooting for Bryce. Very tough night in the office for yeah. him. I would assume he's an underdog. Is he? Let's look. Oh, he's a favorite. Damn. Oh, oh no. no 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 no. My no, bad. No. I yeah, saw yeah. Bryce here. Yeah, so, yeah. you yeah. highlight Bryce. So I'm yeah. like, damn, Bryce so is minus two sixty five. Uh, yeah, Bryce is plus 220. Very tough fight for him. Very, very tough fight. Crone's an underdog. Uh, Matt's a dog. Oh, your boy can make some money on this. Muhammad's a dog. Oh, Nikes. And then Cejudo, minus 105. Boy, there is a parlay that gets my dick wet. That is a nice little so run. Sterling is minus 105 and Cejudo's minus 115. Yeah, that means they don't know what the hell's going on. They don't know so what to expect from him Cejudo. Yeah. So it's basically even money, but it's e e either way, um, so, so who's a slight favorite in this now? Yeah. Drew Dober is a big favorite. Minus 200 is kind of big in MMA. Ah, uh, man, I like the dogs here. You know, I like me some dogs. Yeah. Go back to the lineup. Yeah. Uh, so Bryce, tough night in the office. I hope Bryce gets it done. I, I, I love Bryce. Here's my thing, too. Bryce Mitchell, um, uh, Kobe Covington, these, you know, Kobe's clearly a Trump guy or pretends he's a Trump guy. So he gets a lot of hate. Bryce Mitchell, flat earther. So he gets a lot of hate. I can separate Bryce being a flat earther and whatever crazy conspiracies he's on. It's fun to me. That's his thing. I can separate that from the human, from the fighter and still like, you know, you can still like them. You know, if your favorite fighter for whatever reason is a, a DeSantis guy or a Biden guy, you know, you can still root for him. Just because he's either left or right or in the middle, you know, or he's a flat earth or he's a conspiracy guy, you know, he can still root for the guy just because he doesn't align with you politically or with conspiracies. You can still like the guy. It's okay. It doesn't make him a bad person. It just makes him wrong. Right. 
<laughs> so uh, I'm rooting for Bryce. I like Bryce. Yeah, Bryce is a great guy. Awesome. He's a fun interview. Good dude too, man. He's yeah. just flat earther. Today, super flat earther. He started talking shit to Elon Musk. I'm like, you ain't never been to Mars. Like, holy shit. Talking shit to Elon Musk. No, like, do you, this is your thing? He's like, Joe Rogan, I want to debate you. I'm like, oh my God. You have a better chance winning this fight than beating Joe Rogan in debate, man. That's a bad idea. But I love Bryce. Yeah, he's absolutely awesome. love Bryce. Oh uh, yeah, just on Drudge. Uh, she's a is she a dog in this against Jan? I think the last might fight be. was tough, man. Oh no, she's a oh yeah, she's a favorite. Slight favorite, minus one seventy. Okay, yeah, I mean, not bad to put some money on Jan, especially after that last fight. She's yeah, Jan is badass too. So. Hell yeah. Other uh, than the co-main event, outside of Steamroller and Drew Dober is my favorite matchup on the card. Uh, our boy. Bilal Muhammad versus Gilbert Burns, mm -hmm. uh, both food truck alumni. I hate picking against either one of these guys, but um, ah, Muhammad's a plus 110. I like the dogs here. Listen, when this fight got announced shortly, like a week ago, uh, you know, Muhammad coming off, um, you know, his, his fight over Sean Brady, the, the, the hardcore fan base wants to see him get a title shot. This is a, a whoever wins is guaranteed gets a title shot. Now, you're not going to fight next. And I talked to Muhammad about that. You have to wait, which is worth it. You know, he's been doing it long enough, but this is going to be a, a title contender fight. So whoever wins, I would almost guarantee gets a title shot next after Colby and Leon fight. Um, you know, we, we've seen Gilbert take his, his, his run at the, the title shot didn't work out for him against, even though it was Kamara Usman. Um, he had the, the loss against Hamza, which actually I think did even if, even though he lost that fight, still did more force career than, yeah. than almost anything because Hamzat's this complete mm -hmm. savage nightmare. He went toe to toe with him. Fire of the night, ridiculous fight. You know, so, um, you know, against Neil Magny, uh, Gilbert did his thing. Against Jorge, I, I'm not as high on Gilbert after the Jorge fight as most people are. I didn't think that was a great performance. Um, Jorge did a good job executing his, his jiu jitsu defense there. You know, uh, Gilbert did say he was greasing for whatever reason. What you don't want to have happen is Bilal sees that and goes, oh, he's not that dangerous on the ground because you're going to find out the hard way and probably lose that fight. Gilbert is an outlier on the ground when it comes to that. I think uh, Muhammad needs to do the same game plan he did against Sean Brady, avoid the ground, turn into a kickboxing match. Um, I would say Bilal's more versed, more versatile on the feet, but when it comes to the power, Gilbert definitely has the advantage when it comes to power. Avoid the big shot. I would assume this fight goes to decision. Avoid the big shot. It's five rounds. Avoid the big shot. Be methodical. Just get rounds in the bank. And I think uh, Muhammad wins via decision. I think it's the next title shot. Mm -hmm. For Aljamain, uh, Henry Cejudo, this one's tough. There's a reason the odds are like this, right? Minus uh, 105 to minus 115. So the, the odd makers don't know what to expect when it comes to Henry Cejudo. He's been out three years. So you can base off the Dominic Cruz fight. But three years, especially at that weight class, is a long freaking time. Now, Henry Cejudo is not one of those guys that's just been fishing and hanging out at the beach and doing a shit. He's 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 active. He you know he's he helped John Jones out. He's trained with Mighty Mouse. Uh, he trains with Sugar Sean. He trains with all these guys. He helps them out. Game plans. He's been cornering guys. He trains with them. So he's been super active. So you're dealing with a different type of human being here. He's also an outlier when it comes to his mindset. There's a reason he was a double UFC champion, um, you know, and he was also an Olympic gold champion. So his mindset is what separates him from everybody else on this UFC roster. But I, I do not like when guys take three years off. I don't care what your mindset is. And I also don't like you're finding a guy in his prime in Aljo where ring rust is going to be a factor here. Um, you just hope that – if you are a Henry Cejudo fan, that he doesn't get finished before he can make those changes to kind of win some rounds there because Aljo is a finisher. So um, I, I do think it's a very tough fight for Henry Cejudo. At his age, if you look at the odds, odds are not on his side at his age and going for a title shot. Um, I will, I would probably put my money on Aljo in this. I'll, I'll probably take Aljo. Uh, I'll give you my picks right now. I'll take – let me see it, Chin. Uh, I'm taking the dogs here. Now, listen, I'm taking the dogs – if I wanted to be on the side of Kosh and make sure I'm right, so you guys, you know, take my my pick serious, I can do that. That's what every other show you watch is going to do. That's not what I do. I, I if you want to make money, I like Steamroller as an underdog. I like Chrome Gracie. 
Um, I would probably lay off the Bryce Mitchell one just because stylistically the chance of him get a knock or something like that's not good. Um, I would take Muhammad as a dog and I'll take Aljo. Those are all dogs. I'm taking all dogs here. So I'm taking Matt, Crone, um, Muhammad, and Aljo. Those are my picks. Great card, though. One championship, great card. Taking DJ in that main event. You know I'm taking Mikey. You know I'm taking Soul Ditch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know I'm taking Stan Fairtex. Yep. But either way, great cards coming up. It's going to be a fun weekend. I will be out there for one championship with Wifey. It's our birthday, too. It's Cinco de Mayo. A lot going on. Is her birthday really on Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, dude. That's as crazy. Mexican as it gets. That's so Mexican. So Mexican. And Cadell always fights on Cinco de Mayo, so you got to watch that bullshit. He's like a minus 3,000 favorite. Thanks for that, dude. <laughs> minus 1,600. 1600. That's boxing. Damn. On the undercard, this dude, uh, Janabek, is minus 6,000. Why fight? <laughs> Money. Yeah, true. All right, let's take a little break before we jump right back into the fisticuffs. Got a busy weekend. One championship, UFC 288. A lot is going down. But I will be doing a live Calabas fight campaign with Ryan Garcia, George Janko, and another very special guest this Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific, live on Think Boy YouTube. And you know one thing for sure, I will be all up on my happy hippo because when I'm doing podcasts and I'm doing stand-up, I'm just working out. I'm using the best creative on planet Earth. It's from Happy Hippo. Happyhippo.com, promo code THICK, 23, THICK with three Cs. Get you 20% off the best Kratom on the planet, bar none. They got it all. They got gummies. They got the instant shots, which I use for every show. I always have it in my case when I'm traveling. I just pop those before I hit the stage, pop those before I walked in the studio because I love Kratom, but I only trust one Kratom company, and that's Happy Hippo. I specifically reached out to them and said, hey, love the product, would like to get you on the shows, and that's how this came to fruition. Here we are. Happy Hippo, the only Kratom that I trust. Whatever you need, they got powders, they got gummies, they got the instant shots, they got it all. All right, that's happyhippo.com. Promo code is THICK23 with three Cs. You save 20% off. You can use that code as many times as you want. If you want to try Kratom, but you're worried about what's in it, or you're worried about if it's actual Kratom, what kind of, if there are other additives in it, mm -mm. you need Happy Hippo. That's why I trust them, the only company that I trust. Happyhippo.com, promo code THICK23. Oh boy, for you health nuts out there, guess what? It's that time of year. No, it's not Black Friday, but it is on its freaking semi-annual sale and it's happening right now. You get the lowest price of some of on its most popular products. For a limited time only, you can get 25% off. Usually, I only give you guys 10% off, but this semi-annual sale on its running right now, it's going to be very short. You get 25% off Alpha Brain, 10% off Kettlebells, 60% off other door buster deals that's insane don't wait too long because the sale ends may 14th so you have two weeks that means you only have two weeks to take advantage of these amazing deals on it's providing too it's not black friday it's on its semi-annual sale right now so what are you waiting for head to on it.com slash shop all right if you head to on it.com shop right now you get 25 percent off alpha brain 10 percent off kettlebells 60 percent off all other fun stuff all right don't miss out on this incredible sale. It's only two weeks through May 14th. Onit.com slash shop to join their semi-annual sale right now. We are live with the shirtless wonder, the most powerful redhead in the UFC, hands down. It is the Steamroller himself, Matt Ferrola. What's going on, brother? Yeah, not much, man. Just entering fight week, you know, shirtless, feeling good. <clears throat> Dude, I, I would never wear a shirt if I had that body, man. The only the only person you're competing with in combat sports as far as the most powerful redhead is uh, Canelo. I know, right? I've heard that a lot. Really? Uh, you're more handsome than he is, and you're bigger. You ever seen Canelo? He's not a big dude. No, I've never seen him, but oh, seen him in person. But uh, now I'm trying to get my hands like him, so... I'll yeah, take you, could it. Be, you could beat him in a street fight. They'll tell you that right now, dude. Boxing, you know, I love you, but that's a different story. Let's not get carried away here. MMA, yeah. destroy him. There you go. I'll take that. How you how you feeling for fight week, man? How's, how's the cut down to 55 for you? Is it, has it been a beast this time, or what's going on here? Dude, I'm feeling great, man. I, like, I crushed a workout this morning, and then I just jumped in the cold plunge, like, I live right on the water in Long Island, so I just jumped in the water for 10 minutes. Slight flex. Yeah, man. I got that, that salt water healing. I got that cold water. Love it, and, dude. 
Yeah, man, my, my weight's on point. I'm so hungry right now. I'm hungry physically. I'm hungry mentally. I'm ready to eat this dude's face. Yeah, it's quite the matchup. I, I, I'll tell you what, man. Like I said, I was a fan before he came on, but I've been harping. I, I don't know why this isn't on the main card. Like it's, you look at the card, you know, and I'm not bagging on the card. And, you know, I fought where you guys are fighting in uh, New Jersey there. Usually they bring the power. And it's like you're, the main event, co-main event, fire. Your fight, fire. I just, I can't believe it's not on the main card. Like looking at it for like fights of the night. It's And I know why they're doing it, right? Because you guys are the main main event on the prelims. They want to get people see that and they go, all right, we got to get more. We got to buy the, buy the pay-per-view. So it's, it's kind of a, a tip of the hat to you. But I just... This is has main card written all over it, man. It's such a good fight. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess I get why they're doing it. You know, they want to put that exciting fight on the last fight on the prelims, um, and then I guess they they're pushing that Gracie. You know, they got Crown Gracie. He's got that Gracie name, um, so I think they're just pushing that. But you know, I don't mind. I'm, I'll be fighting right around like nine thirty, so I like that time. Yeah, that's and a great I time. think. You know, the only the only bad part about not being on the main card was like I was looking forward to doing like a press conference and, you know, get, you know, dressed up and doing that because I've never done that. Well, you will, my man, you win this one. And that's kind of how it goes, you know, where I, I was the the main event on the prelims when I fought LeVar Johnson. And then once once they see that you pass that test and then it's just your Mr. Pay-Per-View from there on out, and especially this magnitude of a fight against Drew Dober. You know, was he ranked 14th? So it's a, the first time you're fighting, you know, big-time ranked guy like this, he's a knockout artist. You're a knockout artist, especially last two, but you can kind of do it all. So it's just the perfect matchup to get you on that big-time pay-per-view card. Yeah, man, I love the matchup. You know, well, I've been watching Dober, you know, forever. And then, uh, you know, getting this matchup, I, I give him a lot of props. You know, a lot of these high-ranked guys don't want to really fight back. But, uh, you know, he accepted the fight and I'm, you know, I respect him for that, but I'm going to make him pay for that. Yeah, I I agree. You know, him having, you know, a number next to his name, a lot of guys will use that to kind of as leverage. Like, nah, I'm not going to fight Steamroller. Like he's a, he's a monster and he's not even ranked it. It doesn't move me forward, but, um, you know, the, the ranking system and all that, I I tend not to harp on it too much because it's all, you know. It's crazy that, you know, Drew Dober's not ranked higher. I think you should be in the top 15. There's a bunch of other names I can use as well. So, you know, guys will use that as kind of a leverage to not fight guys like you who are coming up, you know, with surgeons. But I do think Drew Dober, I've known Drew for a hot second. He trains with my team in Denver at high altitude. So, you know, Drew's been doing it, what, since 2009? He's old school, man. He's an old school cat, you know? So this fight is just so fun, man. I can't wait for it. I know, man. Like he, he really is. He's got like twenty fights in the UFC, uh, and you know, w- w- rewatching all his fights, he's got one of the best like highlight reels of knockouts like I've ever seen. So it just it excites me, man. It, it, this fight, uh, I got into this to really, you know, fight the best fighters in the world to test myself against the best guys in the world. And uh, you know, after my last two fights, I was telling him, I want a big fight. I want a big fight, and uh, and we got it. So I'm pumped. And, and what does uh, what do Ray Longo and Matt Sierra say say to you about this when this fight got announced? What do they tell you? Because you, you you don't get me wrong, that you got power in your hands, brother. You got you know a gift from God. So does Drew Dober. This is one of those fights. It's like, all right, man. You know you 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 want to put on a show, but you also want to fight smart and get the W. Yeah, Ray Longo points at his head and he goes, "We're not going psycho in there. We're using our head. <laughs> Smart. We're not going He's I, right, man. That's what he does. And I say, yes, coach. What, 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 uh, what Coach Longo says, I do. So he wants me to use my head and fight smart. You know, that's what we're going to do. Smart man. And do you feel any pressure kind of, you know, you're, it's a big night for your camp, for the Ray Longo camp, because you got Aljo as, as the main event. So you're kind of kicking it off. You know, it's fun as, to, as a team 
to be on a UFC card. And I, I've been there, man. But there's, I remember I was the young buck and it was like, oh, I'm kicking it off. Like you want to set the tone for the team. So the other guys, you know, like, yeah, we are doing something right here. It's brutal when you lose and you got to come back to the locker room. Like, good luck, man. You know, it's, it's a bummer, dude. But you feel any pressure kicking it off for the team? Not really. No, I mean, it's a, a fight's a fight, you know, yeah. I'm kind of, no, nah, I'm ready, man. I, I put the work in, you know, my weight's good. My body's good. You know, this is really the most sparring I've done for a camp. You know, I'm so, I've been sparring like three times a week sometimes. And that's because I've been so healthy. And, um, you know, coach Longo wants me to, wanted me to box more. So I've been doing a lot of boxing Smart. sparring. Um, I've been, uh, you know, throwing the headgear on and doing, you know, big glove, uh, MMA rounds. And then I've been putting the little gloves on and doing more flow rounds. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm ready. I've been building my awareness and, uh, you know, I'm ready. And when you say uh, a lot of boxing sparring is, uh, is the camp is Ray bringing in actual boxers or using MMA guys to mimic Dober? What are you doing there? Um, you know, we, we have so many good guys at the gym and a lot of them come from a boxing background. Um, and we're just, we already have so many good, uh, Southpaws, you know, I've been boxing with, uh, you know, Dennis Bazooka, who's an Albanian beast. Um, you know, Kid Marvelous comes, uh, Justin Montavo is a Bellator guy. He's, uh, comes from a boxing background. Yeah, savages, man. And then, uh, Nazim Sarikov I've been sparring with. He's another UFC stud and, you know, all, all Southpaws too. So I'm, I'm prepared for this guy. Love it, man. And how do you see uh, Aljo and Henry Cejudo going down? I mean, obviously you're gonna be a little biased, but looking at it, try not to be too biased. But I, I'm, with, I'm Aljo's my guy. You know, I love Aljo, and I do think the layoff three years for Henry Cejudo is gonna be a bit of a challenge for him. How do you see it going down? Because you see Aljo all, all the time. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable the the amount of like disrespect Aljo still gets. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> I, I like don't get it, man. Um, but he's so good. Like, yeah. Just watching him train and, uh, and, you know, being able to train with him and like, you know, roll with him and do jujitsu and, and drill with him. Uh, he's on another level, you know, he's, he's the band, he's the bantamweight goat and he's going to prove that, uh, to the world, you know, this Saturday. Um, but I, I think, you know, his striking is so unorthodox. I think that he keeps the range so well with his kicks and, um, you know, with his combos. And I think that's going to frustrate him. I, I don't think Cejudo's ever fought anyone as big and strong and, and fast as Aljo. And I think, you know, keeping him at range with some good movement and good kicks and keeping on him on the end of his punches is going to frustrate Cejudo. And then Cejudo is going to go to his instincts and try to wrestle. And then that's going to go right into Aljo's game. You know, anybody who wants to grapple with Aljo, I, I feel pretty confident that Aljo's going to, I call it, he's got anaconda arms. Yeah, like his, dude, his arms they're they're like skinny, but they're so strong. Yeah, you like can see it skinny enough to like snake around your neck, and then they just get so strong, and then you, and then you're you're tapping. It's it's unreal. So I, I, that's how I see the fight going. Yeah, and I I think the the issue too with Aljo, and it's not his fault. It was kind of this perfect storm, right? Like with the the hate and the the lack of respect he gets, because with the Peter Yan fights, like oh he punked out, and they never thought he was the real champ. It's like, well, he can't control. He has nothing to do with that. Like, what, yeah. do, you want, what do you want the guy to do? And then you look at the the you know his other fights, and you have to give the guy credit, man. You have to. And this is the problem with people disrespecting Aljo. Even if he were to beat Henry Cejudo, who's you know arguably pound for pound top three of all time when you look at his accolades, and he's just a monster. The narrative is still going to be unfortunate for Aljo. Is ah uh, Henry Cejudo's older now? Okay. <laughs> No, no, at one, at, I don't know what it's going to take. At some point, people are going to have to go, oh, no, Aljo's amazing. You, and you guys are wasting your time disrespecting him, and you're missing it. You're missing out on one, one of the rarest talents we've ever seen in the UFC, you fucking morons. Yeah, you know, that's it, though. You know, they've, they've been counting us out from day one. You know, counting out Matt Serra against GSP, counting out Chris Weidman against Anderson Silva, yeah, counting out right. Aljo Peter Jan. You know, they're counting me out against Drew Dober. And watch us all. We're us, us strong island guys. We, we prove them wrong. And, uh, you know, we're some tough, tough guys over here. And I, I can't wait to go out there and show it.
Yeah, I can't wait, man. And with uh, how do you feel about with Marab and the Aljo stuff? You guys talk about that because as a fighter, you have to understand. You know, you know how it is. Like, if you were able to, you know, God willing, you you get your title shot and you're able to fight for a title, that's life changing for you and your family. And you're, you're married, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for you know, you have your wife, and it, you know, ki- you know, once you have kids and all that stuff, like that fight changes your life, changes the course of your life. Being a UFC champion will literally change your life overnight. So there's. There's not a person on this earth besides my brother that I went fight inside that octagon to achieve UFC championship status. So when I hear Marab say that, a part of me is like, I get it, and I love how close you guys are. But at the end of the day, man, the goal why you signed up to fight in the UFC, why Marab, why Aljo, wh- whoever it is, the reason you went to the UFC is to become UFC world champion. You know, so that that I get why he's doing it, and I have a ton of respect for it. And I'm sure as a team, you guys have talked about it. But when it comes to that, that's the one caveat. I'm like, uh, if it's for a title shot, man, you it it there's no friends. At that point, there's no friends in the game. How do you guys feel about it? Yeah, I mean, these guys fight every day in the gym. Every day. Mm-hmm. And um then they're not gonna fight each other, you know, they're brothers. We're we're all brothers. Um and I think there there's ways that both of their careers can go you know, forward positively without them fighting each other. And I, I just wish, you know, the UFC and the people could get behind that. And you got to take it one fight at a time, you know, because anything could happen. Anything could happen. Right. You know? I think, you know, Aljo's got his fight with Cejudo. You know, Marab should be, you know, fighting Sandhagen next. I, I don't see why they don't make that fight. Um, and then, and then you know, after that fight, you reassess and you see where everyone's at. You know, I think Aljo is definitely eventually you're going to go up a weight class, you know, to finish. Um, I think, you know, Aljo beats Cejudo, beats O'Malley, and then probably goes up. And then Mar- Marab, you know, he could beat Sandhagen and then uh, and then maybe fight for the vacant title after that. But, you know, you really got to take it one fight at a, t- fight at a time. And, um, you know, both of both of them are on, on good, uh, good, positive, uh, uh, you know, moving forward. That's and great, it's, man wish everyone would get behind that and you know there's things bigger than fighter bigger than bidding, bigger than fighter big fighting bigger than money and uh you know that's the relationships we build through this and um you know that's you can't buy that with money yeah i like that perspective i i just hope like you said i hope everybody else could jump on that kind of perspective of there's bigger things than just fighting and become world champion because the UFC, if they want that, Marab turns it down a few times, it can get dicey for him. But f- unfortunately for him, he's so talented, there's not a lot of things you can do as far as matchup-wise to discipline him. There's just not. I don't, with his wrestling background, his cardio, and you know his tenacity and speed and quickness, okay, Okay, who are you gonna toss to me then and, and try to, you know, punish me? Good luck. You know, and he just you guys just keep winning and that stuff takes care of itself. Yeah, Mar- Marab's like a cheat code. It's like it's, it doesn't make sense how he doesn't get tired. He'll just he'll just spar like, you know, rounds after round, and then somebody will walk in the gym and and want to spar and he'll, yeah, I'm ready, and he just keeps going. He's just get a freak, huh? Yeah, yeah. Machine mentality. That's uh I mean for him to shoot 49 takedown attempts against Bro, Peter Young in the one. Those. I watched that fight and the next day I was sparring and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to shoot as much as I can during this sparring. Insane. And I got maybe like five times and was dog shit tired. Yeah, like, bro. Different level, man. And I'm sure for you, like with your, with training with those guys, with Al, Joe, Marab, all these other savages you have at Ray Longo's gym there. Uh, your wrestling has to be getting pretty freaking good, man. Yeah, you know, my wrestling, my jujitsu, my striking. Uh, that's why I love mixed martial arts. There's so many, you know, aspects to the fight game. Um, and, and I love, you know, focusing on each one of them. But then what I really love is, is how, you know, you blend it all together in the cage, you know, to, to beat a specific opponent. Well, don't forget you said that when you fight on Saturday because, listen, I love my I love myself a real slobber knocker with Drew Dober, man. Let's use all the tools there if we can, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? 
said, we're using our head. We're not going psycho in there. We're yeah. using our yeah, Don't do it, brother. Don't do it. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the winner of this fight, there's a lot to it because that'd be four in a row for Drew Dober, three for you, and you beat a ranked opponent. You get put in the top 15. But also, both of you, Drew Dober and yourself, have been calling out Patty Pimlet for quite some time. I feel like the winner of this probably fights Patty Pimlet. Yeah, definitely. I mean, once I once I uh, handle Dober, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat up Patty. It's only a matter of time. And now you're a WWE fan. I would assume you get on that mic and give us one hell of a promo with your WWE knowledge and call out Patty. And that's probably gonna be the talk of UFC 288. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds about right. You know, I just gotta, you know, I, I, like a lot of people ask me, they're like, "Oh, do you like prepare what you're gonna say after the fight?" No. And, uh, I don't like, yeah, like I'm so dialed in, like I, I'm focused on the fight, focused on Dober. Um, and then, you know, after that, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be on my A game. And, uh, and then we, we move on to, uh, to serve in Patty Pimblet, some humble pie. Yeah. That, that's the move, man. You don't want to, you definitely don't want to overlook Drew Dober. I would actually, uh, and I would assume most people would agree. I, I would, Drew Dober is a more dangerous fight for you than Patty Pimblet. You know, yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, yes, yeah. Drew, Drew, Drew's such a savage. Um, and how are how are things in uh, Strong Island, man? Uh, it's going good. You know, it's starting to get nice out here. You know, there's, there's nothing better than summertime on Long Island. Um, so you know, the, know. The, I'd love to come out there, man. Yeah, man, you need to. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, you know getting this big win. And then uh, staying in shape all summer, you know, I, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm looking good. I, I don't want to become the cream roller for the summertime. <laughs> Hell no. You're going to be the tan roller, brother. The tan, yeah. you know, I, I don't know how you do in the sun. Usually redheads don't do great in the sun, but. I do good, man. Well, I got to go through a lobster phase. I go through my lobster phase and then it turns into a nice bronze. Oh, dude, I'm excited for that. Almost too <laughs> excited. Uh, and how do you how are you feeling? You, you had some recent comments about uh, Chandler and uh, Connor. What's your thoughts on uh, Chandler and Connor? Do, a, do you think the fight's going to happen? B, do you think they can kind of save this ultimate fighter kind of free fall it's been on, man? Nobody's paying attention to it. I assume that's the reason why they have Connor on, so people remember that the ultimate fighter used to be the biggest show in the world. So yeah. how are you feeling about it? I'm excited for it. I mean, who doesn't want to watch, uh, you know, Conor McGregor on, on his, on his proper 12 whiskey. I heard he was just drunk all, all the whole season and <laughs> it, it just, just getting wasted and, uh, you know, on all, all the testosterone probably possible. Um, yeah. so I, th I think it's going to be entertaining an entertaining show and I'm excited for it, but we'll see what the, you know, it's pretty crazy how he was allowed, you know, to, to really juice to you know let his his leg heal yeah and, but, uh, but you know i'm i'm not mad at it like i i get it you know now i just don't think like if you just look at the way the ufc works unless they give him some exemption which people would freak the hell out about i just don't see him fighting this year you know with the yeah. six month of testing i don't know if, he, if he's even entered the protocol testing time so it's like if you just look at it the way it usually works and now it is Conor McGregor, so they can make exceptions, but it's like, Hey, does anybody else realize how this sport works? He's probably not fighting this year. Yeah, we'll see. And then you see him like that bare knuckle, just still swigging his whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I know, dude, dude, I, I need to take a page out of his book as far as marketing, man, and just start swigging tiger thick, you know, uh, but uh, he, no. he does well with it. Did you see, I, I think what happened too is he was drinking, and you know, he doesn't want to do bare knuckle. What are we talking about here? And, but he's drinking and then the, just the sheer demand of like the pure pressure of fans, but like get in there and he gets in Mike Perry's face. I bet he woke up uh, the next morning kind of hung over like, Oh my God, what the hell was that? I bet Dana was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? What, no, what are you, you doing? Oh, it was great though. Who uh, that, that was a face off that I definitely love to see. You know, who I love Mike Perry, man. I, I could watch that dude fight every weekend and that dude was born for bare knuckle. Dude. He was the hero that nobody knew we needed, especially when it comes <laughs> to bare knuckle. Cause in the UFC, we liked him. Like the UFC fan base liked him. He always put on exciting fights and was always such a dog and we loved him. 
you know, and he had some altercation outside the octagon and lost a few and then goes away and you think that's it. And then bare knuckle comes and I bet even bare knuckles like, yeah, we'll sign him. They didn't know he's going to be the face of the organization. Like he's, when I think of bare knuckle, he's the guy now. Like he, he's the guy and look, he yeah. Michael Venom page, Luke Rockhold, dude. It's nuts. It's like, he's the guy. Yeah, he is, man. I, like I said, he was born for bare knuckle boxing, and uh, I'm glad he found it. And uh, I'm always rooting for him. So, and that face off with McGregor was was awesome. So, but we'll see. You know, McGregor's definitely got his uh, hands full with Chandler. Chandler's no pushover. No, but I, I think I think Connor just does so well against guys he has reach on. Like, agree. Just guy like you know the Mendez fight, and and I think he he'll, he'll probably handle them the same way but we'll see maybe maybe putting on all that muscle is is changed you know changed the way he fights a little bit so i mean i'm i'm interested to see yeah i also i get worried when guys are aren't active you know uh, when guys aren't that active at, in actually competing i always get a little worried because we don't know what version we're going to get the connor we got in the dustin poirier fight wasn't a bad connor when he broke his leg you know it's a tragedy but you know so he wasn't bad in that but we didn't see a ton you know but it, he looked pretty good in that but whenever guy has a long layoff like even with henry cejudo and i'm a betting man but if you look at the odds of a guy over the age of i think uh 32 or something like that and who entitled fights they're like 60 and one like it doesn't go well for people that are older ever ever and then that's not including the three-year layoff so we know that aljo is firing all cylinders it's the best version of aljo we've ever seen with Henry Cejudo, you got to go back three years when we fought, you know, with Dominic Cruz, and we're, you know, you got to hope he's. We know he's been in the gym, you know, and I think what does set Henry Cejudo apart from everybody else is his mindset. You know, you don't become a gold medalist in the Olympics, a two division champion in the UFC, and not have one of the best mindsets of all time. So I think my his mind is can beat anything, but. Just with his wrestling background, he's been wrestling since he was two months old. You know, that catches up with you at his age. Was he 34, 32, or some shit like that? He's getting older, you know. So, and we know Aljo's in his prime. So, I do think he's going to have to battle that. I think he's seen an Aljo that he hasn't seen before. He's a three year layoff. But the, the one caveat there is Henry Cejudo does have the, I think, one of the highest of all time IQs as far as inside that octagon to make changes in between rounds we've seen it man we've seen fights go really bad for him and he has that mental capacity to make the changes and get it done but i got all the confidence in aljo though like watching watching him train like like sparring five fives and like i'm just like man this he's he's such a beast oh he's such a savage and it drives me nuts he doesn't get the respect he does minus 124 aljo Okay, so Aljo's a slight favorite, minus 125, which is almost even in MMA, but he's a slight favorite, which that that's right, because that's the odds makers going, we don't know what Virgil Henry we're going to get, you know? So at least they're, they they got that right. They get that yeah. right. What else you got going on the rest of the day, my man? But not, hopefully not, no more sparring this week, because it seems like Ray Longo's a bit of a old school dude where he makes you guys uh, spar hard still. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely an old school guy, uh, but no, no more. Sparring, sparring's done. Um, and then yesterday uh, was like my last real hard session. I did like a puke drill um, where it's like a fight simulation. You know, I'm hitting pads and then I'm grappling. I'm hitting pads and then I'm grappling. Um, you doing rounds there? You're doing like one minute grappling, one minute wrestling, one minute boxing? Yeah, it was. it's like 30 seconds hitting pads and then 30 seconds wrestling and then 30 seconds hitting pads. And then maybe a minute wrestling. And uh, usually I always, we always do like three, five minute rounds, just like the fight. Um, but I was like, I crushed the first round and like, I didn't, I wasn't really even that tired. And then like Ray comes over and he's just like, like, well, just, just do, do a 10 minute round now, you know, no rest. Damn. I, we've like never done that before. And I just look at coach. I'm like, yeah, 10 minute round. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was, so we just crushed the 10 minute round uh, and that went well for you it went well it, I, like, damn I, boys in shape that has to give you confidence man i know and that's why that afterwards he was like now nah, you know you're ready for anything anything that gets thrown at you yeah you know we always kind of mess around i always have like a schedule you know i kind of like all right coach you know 
like I tell him what I like to do, like what, like what the plan is and whatnot. And, uh, he kind of threw a wrench in my plan yesterday with that 10 minute puke drill round. But you know, I, I took it in stride and I crushed it and, uh, I'm I ready for it, man. Yeah. Now the, the body's there, you know what I'm saying? You've put all the work in. It's just this thing with a drew Dober fight, man. Let him make the mistake. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. And, uh, I've been doing my cold plunges, getting my mind hardened, getting my, bo my body hard. Yeah, um, brother. Yeah, I can feel it, man. And I, I know like you can crack, he can crack at the level you're going to jump in this top 15 after this. Everybody can crack. It's the guys that can crack and then know when to crack. You know what I'm saying? That's the yeah. difference at the high level. It's the guys that know when to, all right, all right, I can, I can play a little bit here, go back to the game plan. It's, you see the yeah. guys like, you know, I love him, Cody Garbrandt for the longest, man. He, he was that guy. And if he got hit, he just, he forgot every, all his training, all his game plan and just fire off. And it, at a certain level, it just, you can't win in the UFC at a certain level, you know? Yeah, yeah, you sound like Ray pointing at your head. We're using our head. Well, we'll have to get you uh, uh, on a fight companion, man. Fly up from uh, out there in Strong Island, get you on a fight companion. That'd be fun, man. Oh, dude, that would be so much fun. And then uh, maybe a food truck, too. Maybe me and Marab get out there. Oh, dude, let's do it. You, Marab, we get the, the squad out there. I know Re me and uh, Ray's been talking to my team. We're going to get Ray out here, too. So we could do the whole squad, man, whatever you want to do. But you got my word, man. You take care of business Saturday. Let's get you on companion, food truck, whatever you want, brother. We'll figure it out. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Uh, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, of course, man. Been a fan for a while. Take care of business Saturday, brother. You know who I'm rooting for. And I'll be in touch, man. Thank you, man. Nice talking. Right, brother. You. Good luck. Stay shirtless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Take it easy. All right, Chin, give it to me. What do we got? All right, let's go with uh so Luke Rockhold, obviously. Well, you want to go over the B uh, the BKFC card real quick? Yeah, BKFC was the definitely the news of the weekend, man. Yeah. Uh you know, like, very, I, very like I told Matt, you know, Mike Perry is the hero we didn't know we needed. And it, Mike Perry is the hero that BKFC didn't know was going to become the face of the organization. You know, Mike Perry beat, uh, dude, it's insane to say, beat Michael Venom Page. That's ins yeah, that was crazy. You know, he's uh, now he's beat Luke Rockhold. Now, if these were MMA fights, I would not pick him. <laughs> Bare knuckle, I'm like, I'm taking Mike Perry. He's just a dog. Like, he, even, uh, I don't think me and Callum talked about it, but when uh, on the show but in the back he's like dude tough fight for mike perry off i'm like listen if it's ufc yeah, luke rockhold all day bare knuckle no this is mike perry shit man this yeah. he's just has this dog in him he was born for bare knuckle it's just what he does he does it better than anybody else on the planet he's just the guy when it comes to bare knuckle he found his lane he's the face of bare knuckle hats off to him you do not want to fight mike perry with bare knuckles he broke fucking Luke Rockhold's teeth. <laughs> he broke his teeth. That dude's a model. He went, oh, you're a model? Say less. Hecka. And then the 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 pre-fight interviews are fantastic. Look at Luke Rockhold. <laughs> Looks like he got in a fight with a fucking jet. Crazy shit. Lip. Those little knuckles got me. Lip busted. Squirt teeth broke. Too. Jaw broke. Maybe a beard. Maybe a better mouthpiece. It's a good fight. Maybe don't fight beer knuckle. Shaving that in that way. Motherfucking Mikey, tough bastard. As tough as they come. Congrats. Thanks to my sponsors. Thanks to the people. I'm not done. Some gloves would be nice, though. So I, this I, is not done. I love Luke. I, I just, you know, I, you know, Luke's a dog. It's just, Mikey is a complete nightmare of a matchup for him. It, it's just, when he says he's not done, I just, he, he, he looks so talented. You know, if you want to come back to the UFC, if they'd have him, maybe one off there, but it, it has to be maybe one more, you know, but not in bare knuckle, especially with that modeling career, son. It's not for you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Then Eddie Alvarez, Chad Mendes. Jeez. Insane Christ. fight, yeah. That was a beautiful fight. Biggest card bare knuckles had. Mm -hmm. Eddie Alvarez and Chad Mendes. My God. I need to get on whatever Chad's selling on his freaking uh, camping. Trips, yeah, hunting peak trip. refuel. He does peak his refuel. trips. Yeah, peak refuel, which is like a you know dehydrated meals. Which here's I what's buy. interesting about sorry, to interrupt mm -hmm. you. Here's what's interesting about Chad Mendez. So you know, guys, well, obviously, podcast guys parlay into podcasting or uh, whatever it is. You know, outside of fighting, merch stuff like that. Yeah, but quietly, Chad Mendez has created this hunting empire hunting fishing. he's so yeah. successful outside of bare knuckle bare knuckle for him is just something to do financially he's good dude he's, he's good. a great success story of guys that retired 
and went on to do great things. Because with that, uh, what's it called? Fins and feathers. Fins and feathers. Yeah. Fins, feathers, and tits, dude. <laughs> Fins, feathers, tits. It's a strip club where you hunt and uh, kill fish. No, uh, he, Chad Menes has, he's a great hunter, right? So he has, and fisher. So he has this kind of service we can sign up to hunt or fish for chad mendez yep. it sells out right always, away yep. all the way it can't be cheap then he has his own line of food when you're hunting he teamed up with peak refuel yeah his own signature meals which i buy which by the way they reached out to us too they're down to give us stuff if we take my kids uh camping uh end of may yeah now, i rent an rv and I, I i just told that the guy didn't accept the offer so <laughs> we don't have an rv right now but i'm gonna find one yeah i'm gonna find one but Good i'll luck. take the kids I'll get, I'll load up on some of that peak refuel. Yeah, peak refuel. They get like beef stroganoff. Make yeah. me throw up when I think about it. I'm not <laughs> why? Do. It's delicious. I know. I'm also not a soldier in Iraq, right? Yeah, that's true. So, you know, I could just bring some hot dogs you and put them over the flames. And some we're steaks. also only there for two nights. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm going on a month hiking yeah. camp retreat, hunting fucking bears where I need beef stroganoff. You know, I don't want to shit my pants. <laughs> But yeah, shout out to Chad Mendes, just doing the damn thing. Proud of you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, on 14, Beck Rawlings uh, lost due to a cut. And then Ben Rothwell, jo Josh Copeland. That was, I don't know what Josh was thinking taking that fight. You know, I, I, I trained with Josh when he was, he was just friends with Justin Wren and would come in just for a big body. Next thing I know, he's in the UFC. Next thing I know, he's fighting bare knuckle against Ben Rothwell. <laughs> Take from your boy here. Ben Rothwell is tough enough in the UFC, let alone bare knuckle, mm -hmm. dude. Good luck being Ben Rothwell, too. And bare knuckle? He's killing it. He's a fucking caveman, dude. But the whole card was good. My boy Chris Camozzi, Denver's finest, got the KO in the first round. Bare knuckle is coming up, dude. Yeah. It's fun, dude. It's a lot of fun to watch. When the card's like this. Yeah, yeah. It was a great card. The, the Eddie Alvarez, Chad Mendez, just two knockdowns apiece was insane. And them boys were bodied up. Well, freaking Mendez is just in. It's all that hiking, fishing, killing. <laughs> Even like Eddie Alvarez said, he looks like a turtle. Like the back, his yeah, looks like a turtle. He like a ninja crazy. turtle. Jacked, he looks yeah. jacked. All that hiking, fishing. Yeah, yeah that's all it is, dude. Yeah, that's all it is, dude. I don't know where you're going with this, Jim. I, I think it's his hunting, saying. fishing. You son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, all right, what do you got, buddy? All right, so this is this is Mike Perry's interview with Helen Yee afterwards. I think Matt, they look like they're in a high school gymnasium. It does. He's such a character. I love his personality. <laughs> Perry was great. Remember when oh, pause it. Remember when Perry came on food truck? He was so fun. Yeah. But he didn't know who he was gonna. I'm like, well, what's next? He's like, I'm open for Diaz, but they're trying to get him. He can't. He's like, they need to get me a fight, man. <laughs> and then finally, like, all right, here's Luke Rockhold. Grab a drink, kick my feet up. I got a flight early in the morning. You know, I'm gonna go pack my stuff and I'm gonna kiss my girl. I've been, man, I'm so damn horn, man. I've been, I've been. It's been a while. I've been saving up, dog, for this. <laughs> I have my legs in there tonight. <laughs> I'm so horned, dude, man. He's such a kid. He's so funny, yeah. dude. He was built for this. 100%. How cool is it to see a guy when he finds his true yeah. lane in life, man? Shout out to Mike Perry. He's just a character, a good person. And I fucking told you, when everyone was hating on the guy, remember when he was going through all that domestic stuff and he beat up the guy in the streets or whatever, all that shit? I don't think domestic, but some sort of street there's thing, some bullshit yeah, older yeah. Dude or something. yeah i meant like outside the the, yeah, the yeah, ring yeah. the the octagon there and i was like and then he had a kid i'm like i'm telling you you're getting a different mike perry mm -hmm. when you have a kid that stupid shenanigans fuck boy stuff used to do that that all goes away and then you can get a real mike perry look at him dude he's so cool he's the best i remember like way early on when he fought this guy named hyun gyu lim korean guy and his corner was like look at him because his eyes were small he's like you can't even see this so that was like a controversy back then <laughs> Then and I was like, like, how swollen his eyes yeah. are. Mike's like, I think he's just Asian. <laughs> it was a weird controversy, but then I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's not that bad, whatever. But then now nah, I grew to love him so much, dude. Yeah, he's hell such yeah, a, su such a fun guy. Uh, so Darren Till reacted to the BKFC as well. He said, if uh, you know, remember he said he would never go to another MMA organization because he doesn't want to re disrespect it's the not MMA. Yeah, so he would go to BKFC if they made him like a humongous offer. Otherwise, he's not doing it. They make him a humongous offer. <laughs> Dude, you've lost four fights in a row. For like, think, yeah. what, five LS7? These guys, what world are you living in? Also, what world are you living in where you think you'd beat Mike Perry and Bare Knuckle? That would be an interesting fight, though. Yeah. I'll tell you how it's going to go. I mean, Mike is killing it. Killing it. Yeah. All the, and now he has confidence on his side, and he's a world champion. Good fucking luck there until. <laughs> that ain't what you want, man. We don't need another L for you. Yeah, I'd watch it, though. 
Um, here's some bout announcements. Cody Garbrandt. Well, there was rumors about him possibly fighting Dominic Cruz again, but that's apparently that's off the table. Uh, that's a bummer. That's yeah. the fight. Yeah, exactly. Dom Cruz the fight. But now he's fighting this guy, Mario Bautista, and I looked at so this is Cody's record. It's not been amazing as of late, but he did win his last fight his against last one, yeah. Jones. And then this he is also fought some monsters in that. Of course, tough stretch. The yeah, top they're not of the doing top. Any favors there. So yeah, this guy's killing it. So yes. yeah. Um, Arnold Allen said that he would like to fight Brian Ortega. It's a great fight. It's, yeah, really good fight. Uh, we're both in the same position. We're looking for a redemption. He's had his title shot. I'm still trying to earn mine. That's the guy to put me right back in there and win there. 100% will be back in the title talk. Great fight. And I just thought this was funny because this is Jorge Masvidal's take on Nate Diaz. He put what it what it looked like to me is this dude ran up on Nate and you've got to respect every threat. It looked like it was self defense. I just want to say can't run up on people. You can't <laughs> violate people's personal space and feel it's cool to get away with. Yeah, the facts. But I'm saying like you know how he did it to Colby. Oh, it's yeah. like as he's saying it, like the comments are just going crazy. Like, like well, that's you exactly violated what you did. Colby's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty funny. Someone said right message, wrong messenger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the comments are funny. Uh, so this, I'm sure you heard about this already. Israel Adesanya, Stylebender, he actually suffered a pretty, it looked insane, dude. Think about the MCL mindset injury. on this motherfucker. Just before his fight. Just, and you're fighting a guy who you've never beat, mm -hmm. and he's knocked you out fucking twice. Think about the mindset I on know. Izzy. Best of all time, dude. Yes, 100%. I remember telling you, too, I was like, you, you had me pick if it was going to be Alex or Izzy, and I'm like, fuck everything's telling me alex should win but i want izzy to win but if izzy wins he's going to change people's like their their outlook on life no, you picked alex. You i did, did. Alex, but, so did like, Brian. but i said i was the only win, one that rode with izzy if he does win he's going to change and like i have mental blocks i'm sure people have mental blocks and you, you think you never get over it yeah. he inspired me i'm sure like millions of people out there to he's, get he's over the biggest star in the blocks. ufc hands well, down yeah, face the ufc doubt. so this is the sp sparring this when he tears it yeah now there's no sound with hell. That's all right. All right, so you'll see here. Right. Oh, damn. fuck, that's bad. And he was screaming in pain. And it's not dirty from that guy. He just did the outside. He just tried to take it down, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I guess Izzy pretended not to feel that much pain after he screamed because he didn't want people to freak out, his team to freak out about the, whole, you know, the injury. Does he but, have to have uh, surgery? I don't think he, no. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, MCL, you can get away with tearing. I tore mine. I didn't yeah. have surgery. Yeah. 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 I tore my meniscus when I, going into the house on the Ultimate Fighter. Meniscus and MCL. I what never, the? F I never did anything. <laughs> How'd you it, tear it? It just went away. Training or what? Training, yeah. It just went Damn. away. It might, I mean, I don't walk with I still living. feel a little pain every day. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, when I have to jump and stuff, it might fuck me up. That might be why I tear my hamstrings all They're so tight because it's like overcompensating. Yeah, yeah, I remember you were crazy. Good thing I don't do anything athletic anymore, so who gives a shit? <laughs> Unless you race Chappelle again. Oh, I want no part of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess Colby Covington just recently received his black belt in jiu-jitsu. And it's from... What's this guy's name? Hold on. Well, anyways, he received his black belt from jiu-jitsu, so people are saying how dangerous he's going to be now because he you know he's an awesome wrestler and now he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu well he's probably been a black belt though by the time you get your black belt you've probably been working at black belt level for years that's the way it works mm. so i don't think much changes here all right good for him though this kind of sucks so davidson figueredo he can't get medical clearance for you damn 290. why his eye remember you guys his eye got jacked up by yeah. brandon Moreno. fuck man. so apparently he's still not good enough to to fight 290 that's a bummer. And let's go. Let's revisit it. We talked about this on Fighter and the Kid, but not here. So the the records that uh, Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia made, as far as the gate, like the fifth, like fifth highest ever beat Canelo Mayweather. 1.2 pay-per-view buys yeah. is insane. That's huge too, yeah. Insane. And again, that's off to both guys. Neither one can pull this on their own. It's that combination that got this done. And by with them making sure this fight happened. Like hats off to them. Ryan Garcia is on fight uh, Cowboys fight campaign this Saturday awesome. for UFC 288. You got Ryan Garcia, that bad mama jam is on fight campaign, so it's gonna be a fun one. I give Ryan more credit too on this whole thing because yeah. he's the one that he had to like compromise all Everything. these different things yeah. just to so, get it done. Yep. All right, this is a uh, exhibition match that Floyd Mayweather is gonna do, 
<laughs> the card's going to be called Last Names Matter, June 11th, and he's that fighting John Gotti. All Lives Matter? I don't know. But John Gotti the third, which he's a, a descendant, you know, of John Gotti. But uh, he doesn't, I don't know if he does boxing, but he's like five and one in MMA. Damn, Floyd just doing whatever. He's like, his dad was John Gotti. You're like, what? I know. So you're going to fight him? Okay. Yeah, I mean, good him. for John Gotti getting the fight, though. For sure. Big dude, too. It's kill or be killed. Uh, not really, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. All right. Uh, let's go to... Oh, this is just silly. So <laughs> there's six power slap athletes that got suspended because Mother all kinds of stuff like narcotics and steroids, <laughs> just a bunch of stuff. Bro. Six athletes. But why are they even testing? Uh, well, a, why are you test them? They're in rash guards, first of all. If they're in rash guards, there should be no testing. Second of all, I want my slap fighting athletes on map. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it more exciting. What are we doing here? They're trying to ruin the sport. How dare you? It's just funny that they test them. I don't know. I don't know why they test them. What are you doing? They should test them and celebrate. <laughs> like the champion won. He was on meth, had oxycodone in his system, zero hydration, you know, and in a rash guard with tits. You know, it's like, yeah. all right. <laughs> that's I got this. That's what, the, this what are you doing here? Oh, this was nuts. You his see this? face? Dude. Yeah, yeah. So I guess he's the only, he's the second person ever who was untrained in this. This is Tito Ortiz doing this like a simulator for, it's called NASTAR, which is basically, you know, for you know, space, whatever crap. I'll just play this video for you real quick. It, his face that someone paused it. I sent to my group chat with Rogan and Callan and Eddie. I was like, look at Tito's face. It's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing this, I wouldn't do that just because I don't want to be a meme with my right? face like that. Yeah. <laughs> Once I'm like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That is insane. Looks like my grandpa. Dude, it's that's nuts. like a movie character. Like an evil movie character. Yeah, it is. But I mean he survived he's nine G's, which is insane. <laughs> he goes, Yep, oh, that one got me. That one got me. Yeah. Yeah, the video's funny. They're all one G, two G, they're counting down, mm -hmm. and his face just goes to straight mush. All right. Uh oh, Georgie sent me this. I guess Korean Zombie is like a pretty damn good singer. <laughs> I'll just play a tiny bit because I don't know how much we could show. It's like all Koreans can sing. I don't know what the hell it is. Is this like Korean Idol? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I'll just play that much. Man, oh, I was Crazy. feeling it, dude. No, but he's good, though. Wow. So you need to start a band, a little K-pop zombie band? <laughs> Dude, zombie? That'd be a great name of an actual K-pop band. Hell zombie. yeah. The Zombies? And this is uh, from BJPen.com. It's Fabrizio Verdun. Yeah. Yeah, he's looking really cut now. Hold up. Take the music off. What's he just so jacked for? What's he going to do? I don't know. He's not part of PFL anymore. Yeah. Uh, but he's looking like lean and jacked. Jack yeah. City. All right, dude. I think that's it. All right, buddy. That's it, kids. Enjoy the fights this weekend. You have one championship going down on May 5th. That's Friday, live on Amazon Prime. That ridiculous fight card. DJ Marias, uh, the third fight. Rod Tang, Mikey Mushameshi, the pizza expert. Stamp Fairtex, Robert Solditch. You got Sage Northcutt, RDR. You have the Croatian RoboCop doing the damn thing. That's all going down this Friday on Amazon Prime video. Make sure you tune into that. Then Saturday, UFC 288, we're doing a live Calabasas fight campaign with George Danko. You got uh, Ryan Garcia, myself, and another very special guest that's live at 7 p.m. Pacific time on Thick Boy YouTube. Make sure you tune in because you're going to get a lot of fun, a lot of chaos when you got Matt Steamroller for Rolla versus Drew Dober, Crone Gracie, Bryce Mitchell, Flat Earther, Jessica Andrade, Muhammad Gilbert Burns, Aljo, and Henry Cejudo. It's all going down live 7 p.m. Pacific time on Thick Boy YouTube, Cal Bass fight campaign UFC 288. Get you some. All right, kids. As far as touring goes, 
Uh, I'll be doing spots around LA in May, and then I think it's May 19th. I'll be at the Ice House Shop and Friends. Those tickets just went on sale today. One show only, Shop and Friends at the Ice House in Pasadena. Then June 2nd through the 4th, that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. And then uh, in June, I'm jumping across the pond. Starts in Belfast, June 15th. Then we're off to Glasgow, June 17th. Manchester, June 18th. London, June 22nd. Cardiff, June 23rd. And then we end in Dublin, my favorite, June 25th. All right, tickets at thickboy.com. And new Tiger Thick merch drops this Friday as well on thickboy.com. If you haven't got Tiger Thick yet, it's available right now. We all new pricing. We finally negotiated the price down, $59.99. Get you some of that sweet, award-winning, thick nectar. All right, kids? But uh, Ice House, May 19th. La Jolla, see you June 2nd through the 4th. Now I'm off to Europe, starting Belfast, June 15th. Love you, kids. Enjoy the fights. If you're in Denver for one championship, come say hi to your boy. All right? Love you guys. Be safe. See ya. Greatest of all time. Here we go, the epic trilogy fight. For the first time ever, Demetrius Johnson defends the one flyweight world championship in the USA. Greatest of all time, I'm an animal. No bark or bite, that's why they call me go. One fight night 10, Johnson versus Marias 3 on Prime Video.